Hello everyone, my name is Austin. Today I'm going to be talking about the requirements and ratings and overall this is the general path to becoming a commercial pilot and everything you'll need if you want to fly aircrafts and get paid to do so. Alright, so on the right hand side of this slide you're going to see a list of all the different ratings you're going to have to accomplish so that someday you can sit in the cockpit pictured on the left hand side of this commercial jet. First is going to be an associate or bachelor's degree. I'm going to go farther in detail on that when we reach uh, the second to the bottom, which is restricted ATP or air, airline transport pilot. First thing you need to do is find a flight school, get your private pilot's license, go straight into your instrument rating, commercial license, and then certified flight instructors, CFII and MEI, they are not requirements, but they are great ways to build time to be able to finally get to the regionals and major airlines. Most of the military programs that I'm familiar with are going to require you to have your four-year degree completed before you can enter them. You also need to pass their physical and mental requirements along with SEER school, which is survive, evade, resist, escape. They come with a 10-year commitment, but the positive to that is you need to look at the whole time that you're enrolled in this program through training and all the way up until you're a commissioned officer and flying their aircraft, you're getting paid. Second, you're going to get to fly some of the most advanced aircraft on the entire planet. So you just have to weigh out your options, see if the military is a good decision for you. But this is a great way to build time, and once again, it'll come full circle when we talk about the restricted airline transport program, they have some of the lowest minimum to military pilots coming out of their military commitment. Now, if you don't have a degree, but you're considering aviation as a career, you want to consider the college programs that pair in a bachelor or an associate's degree with flight time. And this has a lot to do with your personal schedule. Do you have the time to work and go to school or devote yourself full time to school and flight? Next thing you need to do is get a medical. I suggest getting a first class medical only because you'd rather find out sooner than later. There's something that would prohibit you from getting a first class medical, which is mandatory to be able to fly for the regional and the major airlines. Last, set goals. You need to say in six months I'm going to be here, in 12 months I'm going to be there, and in two, three, and four years this is my ultimate goal. This is what is going to get you from point A all the way to the regional and major airlines in the end. Now after you've picked your flight school or your program, you're going to go ahead and start flying with your instructor, start doing your ground school, start logging time and studying, build up until you're ready to do your solo, your cross-country solo, and then when you've finally accomplished your 40 minimum hours of flight and 20 hours of ground, you'll be ready to get your endorsement and go take a written exam and then a check ride with an FAA examiner, and once he passes you, you will be a certified private pilot. Next step is getting your instrument rating. And this is for IFR conditions, or instrument flight rules. As you can see in the picture, low visibility coming into a runway. Now this is a minimum of 35 flight hours with 30 ground hours. And once again, a written exam and a check ride with an FAA examiner to put that you are instrument rated on your pilot's license. The next step in the process is getting your commercial license. And that's going to be a minimum of 250 flight hours written exam, and a check ride. Now once you're done with your commercial license, now you can get your certified flight instructor, certified flight instructor instrument, multi-engine instructor, any of these, and you actually can finally be paid to fly airplanes. And there is all sorts of jobs out there. You're not limited to just being a flight instructor, but it's a great way to build time. You need to research all the different jobs you can do but this is when you can finally build your time to work towards getting on with a regional airline. The restricted ATP or airline transport pilot. This allows you to be a first officer on a regional airline. Now, if you got out of the military, all you need is 750 flight hours to get 
this restricted ATP. If you got a bachelor through the accredited 141 program, you need 1,000 flight hours. And if you got an associate through the same accredited program, you only need 1,250 hours. If not, the minimum required is 1,500 hours. Now, once you've finally acquired 1,500 hours of total flight time, you will be able to get your unrestricted ATP and get on with a regional airline. Now, once you've gotten onto a regional airline, you start as a first officer and you want to build your experience and seniority to move over to captain and eventually build up enough pilot in command time or PIC and jet time to apply to a major airline. Now, most of the research I've done, the major airlines are looking for a thousand hours pilot in command and a thousand hours of jet time. That's going to get you a job as a first officer where you gain your experience and seniority and can move over to the captain's seat. There's many different flight platforms or aircraft to fly, and that's going to be where you want to fly in the world, the needs of the company, domestic or international. Either way, your pay is going to be pretty good when you get to the major airlines. This is most people's goals uh, when they begin the whole entire trek from being a private pilot to a commercial pilot, eventually a airline transport pilot. I uh, hope this has helped any of the guys out there who are considering it. Look in the references. There's some great links uh, for more information if you're considering this and do your research. That's the biggest thing I can tell anybody out there. Do your research on where you want to go, where you want to be at the end, and how to get there.